All we need is a little understanding Walk a mile in their shoes And if we keep our hearts open-minded We'll enjoy this wild ride called life And if we keep our hearts open-minded We'll enjoy this wild ride, this wild ride called life And we're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Truths We Hide podcast. Can we just talk about? Okay, so I met Randy at a at a Mary Kay party, hosted by one of our friends. And ever since then, like I, I, I was like, I love her. Let's just do it. And so I became a consultant because. Let's just go back. My mom has been using Mary Kay since I was born. Okay. So it's been 45 years and this stuff is still going strong. And so I've always believed in it, but, mm -hmm. um, she talked me into it and I've been, I still been using it. I think I've known you for like five years now, I think. At least, I mean, I would maybe a little bit longer, but at least yeah, five years. Yeah. At least yeah. five years. And it was at a Fort Polk, Louisiana, the place where I didn't want to go, but I ended up loving. Like I retired out of there. I still have dear friends from there. So mm -hmm. never, never knock it until you actually get there and actually make a home. So Randy Gleason is here. And I, you know, I messaged her and I was like, why haven't you been on my podcast? Like, you have a story to tell. And I wanted you to come on here because you're just such a beautiful soul. So Randy, thank you so much oh. for being here. Well, Seriously. I'm so Excited. I'm so happy to be here, Annette. I'm just love, respect, and adore you so much. And it's so amazing that we never realize like the relationships that we build um, just every single day and the little bitty things and how they become such treasured people that for years you get to be a part of their life. Yeah, I just can't believe it's been that long. I'm like five, six, seven. It's been ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it has been longer because I retired four years ago. Mm -hmm. So, okay, crazy. And I had so, known you at least a year or two before you told me you were going to retire. So it's been yeah, a little while. Yeah. Ah, all through makeup. So, <laughs> so tell us, tell us a little bit about your background before you decided to do Mary Kay. Because let me just tell you, she isn't just a Mary Kay rep. Like she has risen from incredible storms. And I can't wait for you to hear that part. But tell us about who Randy is behind all of that. Yeah, well, I was blessed to grow up in Louisiana, right next to Fort Polk, Louisiana. And uh, it's so funny, people I would meet in the military say, like, you're from here? Like, you're from here? I'm like, yeah, I'm from here. Like, yeah, like, they're shocked. Like, anyway, and so um, I was so blessed to grow up in, in, in right in Vernon Pierce, which is right by Fort Polk. And, you know, it was like the greatest honor to live next to a military installation. I mean, the respect level that you have for those that serve us and, you know, your windows rattling all times, all days of the night. It's just normal there. Like, it's like, it's just normal. Like your house will shake and it's like, yeah, it's no big deal. Um, but I was uh, born and raised in that area, a very small town. Um, after high school, I went to college and um, it, it was actually in college. I was looking for extra money. And, you know, Annette, um, I grew up in, um, I was so fortunate to have self-employed, hardworking people around me that didn't really teach me, but they showed me by their example of what it means to be a great business person, to be successful in business, to go the extra mile for your customers. My grandparents actually owned a general store, you know, one of those little convenience stores that you stop at that has everything from feed to food to to like vegetables like everything right a deli everything and so at about age seven we began working in the stores and recently i you know there's a lot of conversation in the world about balance and harmony and schedule and um uh, basically you know not letting your career come before your family and by all means um a career doesn't come before our family but i'm going to tell you my grandmother she never took the day to sit in the floor and play with me do you know what she did? She said, get in the car. Let's go to the store. And I got to sit alongside her as she closed out registers. I got to 
I got to stock the cooler and help out. And I always had great quality time with my grandmother, but she was not stopping her business and her world to do that. She took me along with her. And I am so grateful that I was exposed to someone like that. And, and I'm just going to tell you how real it was. We started working in the store around age seven. And then by 10 or 12, you were on the register. You were getting minimum wage paychecks. It was $4 an hour then. And I remember some weeks that I wouldn't hardly get any paycheck because I ate my paycheck. Like you would have to keep a tab of everything you ate while you were there for your eight hour shift. And I, I loved beef jerky and they had that great beef jerky. And literally like one week I didn't get a paycheck because she subtracted out all my, my costs. But I learned at an early age how to budget. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you learn so many skills. So if you know, if you ever have those feelings of, oh, it's my career coming before my kids, well, it doesn't mean that you don't have quality time, but it also doesn't mean you can't involve, you know, your kids and grandkids, what you're doing. My, my dad was also self-employed. My mama was a teacher. And um, after when I was in college, I was looking for something to do for extra money. And that's really what led me to the company I'm with now. Little did I know at 18 years old that I was doing something for extra money that would lead to a career of 18 years. I had no idea of that tables. I worked minimum wage for already like eight to 10 years. And I was honestly done with that. Annette. I did not want to work late hours. I didn't want to have to close a store. I didn't want to wait tables late at night. I was looking for something that I could earn extra income on my schedule. And I knew it had to exist. 18 years ago, direct sales wasn't the buzz. There wasn't Facebook. There wasn't all these things. It was completely um, kind of a foreign thought for someone who was 18 years old to do direct sales. Um, but that's what really led me and through all my research led me on the path I'm on. How did you keep showing up to do this? Because I, even now, sometimes people think, I'm just going to say it. Some people think negatively of mm -hmm. businesses like this. And so it's so hard to try to tell people, no, it's much more than that as a community. And it, you, mm -hmm. meet, you meet amazing people through it. So how did you get past all that to show people that it's much more? Oh, girl. And I totally understand that because before I became a consultant, I had some thoughts too. And what I learned was, was that my preconceived thoughts and, uh, you know, perceptions were totally accurate. It's just a lot of times we base on a career based on a person we know. Mm -hmm. OK, so in other words, some people may base what they think a nurse does based on a nurse they know. They may base what a lawyer does based on a lawyer they know. And so if you ever knew someone who maybe had a different style than yours running a type of business, it may have like pulled you away from the thought of that business because you thought you had to be like them. And that's the thing that almost held me back. I remember um, a month before I started my business with the company I'm with, um, I actually attended, my aunt hosted a, a, an in-home party for a, a totally different, uh, different, not even the same kind of products. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting there and the woman in the front of the room said, um, now after today's presentation, I'm going to tell you about uh, if you ever want to earn extra money or have a business, with this and I'll pull you aside and, and tell you about that and get your feedback. I was sitting there. Now I want you to know that I grew up on a cattle farm. I was a tomboy. I was not a girly girl. I didn't wear makeup. I did. I mean, so imagine an 18 year old kid sitting at this party with all of her aunts and, you know, mother and grandmother. I'm sure I was not on her radar, but have you ever seen pretty woman? Yes. Big mistake. Big mistake. OK, because I remember leaving there that day feeling less than feeling that obviously she didn't see potential in me because she asked everyone but me. She asked everyone wow. for me. And I remember how that made me feel. And so I went home. I was still researching. And then once I studied, you know, how did this how did the companies different companies do in economic recessions? You know, what is the commission you know that you earn like i literally studied every single thing about every company and i was grateful i know now it's storming here so i hope it's not too loud um but it, i'm so grateful that she didn't right it's part of the story so many times that the things that don't happen are just as important as the things that do happen um and that's what led me to where i am now um, how did I push through? Well, my original goal was just to earn a few hundred extra bucks a month. I'm going to be honest. I did not want to win a free car. I, none of that. Like when the woman said to me, oh, you can win this and this and this. I'm like, sister, you are wasting your breath. 
There is no way I'm doing that. I'm just going to earn a little extra money. And my original goal was to have just a dozen customers. That would be the extra money I want in college. I think that's a key too. You said, because so many people, you know, may have a different opinion about that kind of business. Is the rain too loud? Because I it's am an RV. It's, it's okay. Fine. Yep. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sure they're like, why are you in an RV? That's weird. And anyway, so the rain is pretty loud in an RV, just so you know. But okay. So, but this is the thing. I didn't need everyone to buy from me. I didn't need everyone to approve of what I was doing. And I think that was a very valuable lesson as an 18-year-old is you don't need the acceptance of everybody. Your goal is not to make everyone like you. You know, I performed to an audience of one, um, and that's you, I believe, who God put the dreams in my heart. And the people that I believe that I that are drawn to what I do are the people that are meant to be in my space. You are so right. And I'm so glad you said that because as you were speaking, I'm sitting here thinking the same thing with, well, with me and just this whole podcast world. I didn't know. I was like, who's going to listen? Who's going to, how, how do I become, you know, these people that I wanted that I was comparing myself and so then I realized that this is just me. Like, if this is my journey, this is what I'm going to do. And mm -hmm. I think that that's true for, for you. Like, this was your journey because you are right. You attract the people that are meant to be there. And then that believe in you and your mission and all that. And I think that's one of the most important things. Well, especially as an 18-year-old, but even now, because the world is so different. So, you know, you keep showing up because you believe in it. And you oh, do yeah, have the right people. I, and I think two, okay, so two things is one is the day that you quit allowing the opinion of other people to control what you do or you think is the day you will seek total freedom in your life. But secondly is I also believe that um, if it, if what it took was for me to start a business with a low investment to find out who my friends were, it was well worth that hundred dollars. Right. Because I don't know about you, but if my girlfriend opened up a boutique, I don't care what she was selling. I would be first in line. Right. And that's what a friend does. And so my thing is, if, if when I became, became consultant, maybe there was a couple people that whatever whispered. They whispered a lot now, all right? 18 <laughs> years later, right? But anyway, uh, but it really helped me to know who your real friends are. And I don't know about you, but I would rather have 100 people that are you know, in my corner rooting for my rise than a thousand who are lukewarm or not. Yeah. And to me, relationships is so important. And, you know, it, you people say, you know, who your friends are in hard times. But I also say, you know, who your friends are in your best times, because your true friends are rooting for your rise. They want your victory. They want you to be debt free. They want you to build that dream home. You know, they want that for you. And I hope that the whole world can see that at the end of the day, it's relationships that really give our life such you know, such warmth and such goodness. You're so right. Oh my gosh. So you stuck with this for 18 years. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And have you reached the milestones that you have wanted so far? Or is there something that you're just like, I'm still going, I'm still going to grab. Yes. Yeah, so yes, there is one other, uh, one other spot, one other level that I'm working for in my business and it's so interesting because on the outside, you know, social media is like our highlight reel, right? Um, very seldom are we super vulnerable and we show the hard times, right? Because no. it's not joy. It's not it's not life giving. It's, you know, whatever. And um, I think in business, what people are surprised to know is that you have just as many, if not more challenging moments than you do those mountaintop experiences. But I've never learned from the mountaintop experiences over all the pink Cadillacs and diamonds. And you learn a little in those, but I've always learned more in the valleys or in the moment where I didn't cross a goal or those private moments, you know, at midnight when you're in your office and you're relooking at what went well or what do I need to change? It's in those moments. So we are pressing in right now to finish um, a huge, huge goal. It's to become a national area. And so we're working on that. And it's so exciting. Last year during COVID, we had to change so much about our business in it. And it's so fun to help other business owners and coach them on that. But I believe that if you're a business owner, your worst mistake can be standing there with straight legs. I don't know if you've ever been on a boat, but if you're standing with your knees locked 
and a wave comes or you will fall out of the boat. Like you have, you will literally stumble out of the boat. Okay. But if you're standing with bent knees, really in a defensive position, you are able to pivot. And I think as a business owner, your number one, your number one characteristic that you have to lean into is always being willing to pivot. And in March, oh my gosh, we changed so much. We went from a business that was more face to face in person to 100% virtual. And I was scared to death in it. I was scared to death. 18 years and everything was just amazing. And I was nervous. I was. Um, but we poured into things for two weeks and changed all of our back, back office systems and everything we needed. And last year was our best year ever in 18 years. And um, I say that just because if you're a business owner, we have to think. God gave us a brain to think. And we have to think this situation doesn't have to be a limitation. It can be an opportunity to evolve, an opportunity to change and to meet the needs of our customers on a different level. So how did you, how were you able to help customers just online? Because sometimes it's hard, especially with skincare to, mm -hmm. to show people, how did, how did you do that? Oh my gosh. It was so fun. So what we, what we noticed, we had to ask ourselves, just like if, when you're starting a business, you have to ask yourself, what is the need right now of my customers and how can I fill it? I went to college in marketing and I don't use anything from that degree really. Because <laughs> it I think if you went into marketing, it would be a totally different, everything would be different because with the internet, everything is so different. But the one thing I always take is you have to find the need and you have to find how you can fill it. And so we already knew that our customers, they probably weren't going to wear as many cosmetics during COVID sitting at home, Netflix and chilling, right? But we did know that a lot of women were feeling disconnected. They were feeling isolated. And just because they were home, that didn't mean that they maybe didn't want to do skincare or beauty treatments, right? Because before you didn't have time to think about wearing a mask for 20 minutes. Yep. What you got now? All you got now is time at home, right? And so, um, so we just recreated everything to do virtual parties using Facebook, using Zoom to provide experiences for women. We went the extra mile and we send out free samples. So uh, we don't charge. You get a sample with six of our best treatments. And then we do that as a gift just to have an experience with you and lead you through the steps. And it was just so fun to let women connect, even in a virtual world. It, it kind of provided just a little bit of jo more joy than feeling so isolated. I believe that. And I love it because I did a, I think it was an eight week virtual um, not coaching. It was an online program with other women veterans. And what mm -hmm. some of the feedback that we received was they were just looking forward to someone to talk to online, mm -hmm. face to face, yeah. just like this. And that's what brought them happiness that week. And so I could totally understand that you, even if it's for mm -hmm. with this whole change with, with the, with skincare and just mm -hmm. meeting other women, I think it's amazing. And I'm just going to tell you guys that I haven't worked. It took about a year before I wore makeup again because I was like COVID. I just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. Mm -hmm. But within the last few weeks, I've started doing it again. And I have mm -hmm. all Mary Kay on, of course. But um, it just changes you, you know, your whole yeah. attitude just to make yourself mm -hmm. up. And I actually mm -hmm. do like watching other women show tutorials on how to do makeup <laughs> and not just YouTube, like people that I know. I'm like, I yeah. want to do that. And so it's helpful. So yeah. we you know, did skincare like the whole, probably from uh, April 1 to like October. And then we notice people are now like getting out a little bit more and want to wear color. We teach a level up your look on Zoom. So like how things you may want to do if you're on a conference, you know, with your makeup and things like that. So now we're doing color, more color. And of course, we do tons of giveaways during the session because we it just even for a moment, we all want to just have fun. Right. Yeah. Just do something fun. Mm -hmm. I love that. And but I do want to point out now, Mary Kay isn't just for for women. There is a men line because I got <laughs> some stuff for my son. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and he was like, Mom, Mary Kay's for girls. I'm like, no, dude. I mean, there's stuff in here for men. So um, we just wanted to remind the watchers out there that there is. And it's very good skincare. <laughs> Absolutely. And we have a, we, like yesterday, I was, it was, wasn't was storming yesterday. It was actually beautiful and warm here where I am right now. And um, I got a sunburn. It was, oh, it was overcast. And I didn't realize it. And I got a burn all in my body. And we have an after sun gel. 
that literally you put on after you burn and it helps you prevent peeling and it cools your skin. And today it's a tan. It was a burn yesterday. Today it's tan. It's like magic. <laughs> but you know, when you, you mentioned earlier, you said, um, you know, how do you keep going even if, you know, maybe someone doesn't believe in you? I think another thing too that's important, regardless of what you're doing, whether it's a workout routine that you're committed to or a diet or a, a lifestyle that you're committed to, I think what's most important is that you remind yourself of what you do. You see, sometimes, you know, we have self-sabotaging thoughts yes. and it's just part of the human flesh. Like it's just what it is, but you have to rewrite the script. And so any time in my journey that I had, um, you know, whether you call it, you're in a fog or a funk, everybody comes up. What's really happening is the messages that you're telling yourself are not what your goal they don't they're not congruent with the goals that you have and so you're sitting there in this disoriented like this is a goal i have but this is what i'm thinking right now when they don't match up there's some problems there and so one thing that i always recommend is whatever you're doing you have to find the truth in it and you have to find what you are giving to the to your client like what is it that you do so in other words when i'm working with a new consultant and i said so tell me what do you what do you feel like you're doing as a consultant? You know, for me, I know that I'm providing a product that has ingredients that go through the most stringent testing and way above the USA standards, the European standards. I know that I allow a woman to be able to shop conveniently. I'll deliver to her door or drop ship it to her door in just a couple days. She doesn't have to wait weeks. She doesn't have to go to a box store and waste money on things that aren't going to match her. I'm going to do custom matching. You know what I mean? So I absolutely know what I provide my clients and services. And when you own your truth and you know what you're providing to someone, it doesn't matter what someone else says or believes. They're just not going to be your ideal customer. That is so true. That is so true. I'm so glad you said that because it doesn't, it's what it applies to everything, every mm -hmm. type yeah. of business. You have to, you always have to go back to that. And so you're I really like someone in your life. I mean, not everybody likes Nutella. Not everybody <laughs> likes chocolate ice cream. It's not personal. It's not personal. And I think so many times when people start a business that someone says no to them and they're like, oh, I'm quitting. I'm like, what? Like, what? Yeah. I mean, think about this. If you asked, if you had a pack of gum in your pocket and there was a three or four people and you asked three or four people if they wanted a piece of gum and one said no, are you going to quit chewing gum? <laughs> they just didn't want your piece of gum. Like it's that. So, so many times we we put so much emotion and we don't always think logically because we're so passionate about something, but it's so important just to think logically. You know, when I started in it, I just wanted a few hundred extra bucks a month. After college, I started my first real, you know, big girl job, real job, whatever you want to call it, because my core need was safety and security. I wanted a corporate job that had a set pay, set sick leave, all these things. And what I realized was it wasn't so secure after all. I was born with cystic fibrosis and um, it's a genetic disease that I do about two hours of therapy a day, uh, respiratory therapy. And um, I had a lot of frequent hospitalizations. Thankfully, we just got a miracle pill last year and I haven't hospitalized in over a year and four months. Oh my but, God. Um, and the miracle pill like came a few months before COVID. It's just such a blessing, right? But um, my first year in that job, I had a, a lung function dip and I was in the hospital for 28 days and oh I had exhausted God. all my sick leave and all my vacation leave. And it was one of the hardest moments in my young, I was 21 years old, one of the hardest moments in my life. And I'll never forget my husband, I were about to be married and my doctor, they stood at my bed, the end of my bed in the hospital and they said, we know how much a career is important to you. We know that. But we're asking you to rethink that because your health needs to come first. During that season, I would get up about 4.30 in the morning to do my respiratory treatments, work all day like everybody else, come home, dinner, house, and then respiratory treatment and fall in bed at night. My body just couldn't keep up. And um, what they were hinting was for me to go home and not have a career. That's what they were hinting so I could get my lung function back and live, right? But what I heard instead was, you need to find a career that will work around your life. And I was already a consultant part time and it was not even on my radar to do that as a career. That was just something fun I did in college. And it, it was my, my husband, we got married like three weeks later, but he came to me and he said, you know, you played with that thing in college, a couple hours here, a couple hours there and made great money. What if you actually treat it like a business? Like what if you actually worked it like a real business? And within four months, I had matched my corporate income by doing it part time and I left my job. So 
sometimes the hardest moments in your life are there to be a fork in the road and to be a, a, an opportunity for you to assess what's most important and what do you really want out of this life and what do you want your life to really look like and um who who would have ever thought that you know this many years later right now i'd be in an rv chasing my husband you know living his dream um because of the choices i made from a hospital bed in 2005. you know who would have ever thought that those difficult moments would lead to some of the greatest blessings Oh my God, I am feeling that so much right now because I mm -hmm. find after my car accident, it took me a while, probably a good year to finally open up my eyes mm -hmm. to see that what God was doing for me all my life was mm -hmm. not to me, it was for me. And mm -hmm. that, and from that, I was able to mm -hmm. see all these other things that I was taking for granted that I was like, boohoo me. So I just, I feel what you're saying so much yes. because yeah. you did, you took a difficult thing, mm -hmm. but you were able to see something else from it. And mm -hmm. oh my gosh. Yep. And I love that. I love that quote. What if everything that you feel happening is that it's happening to you is actually happening for you. And it's when you're in the valley and when you're in the moment, it's hard to see that oh, it's yeah. so hard. But I, I think that once you do, anytime you face obstacles, I always ask myself, what, what lesson do I need to learn? I don't want to repeat this class. What lesson do I need to learn from this and then move forward? Yes. Oh my God. I, well, I am so happy to hear about that pill. I am so happy to hear <laughs> <laughs> that you're doing so much better and that you just excelled from everything. How can we support you? What do we need to do to support you in your, your continued success and everything that you're doing? Oh my gosh, Annette, you're so fun. Well, if you want to follow along on social media, my uh, Randy Gleason is on Instagram. But most importantly, if you want to have some fun and do a girl's day, we can do Facebook or you can do Zoom or you don't have to show your face and do it. We have YouTube <laughs> events. So just follow me along on social media and send me a DM and I'll get you a free customized kit out the door to you and you can have some fun. Um, but thank you, Annette. I think that the greatest way you can support a woman in business is to simply encourage her and uh, do a like, make a comment. Um, Sometimes, I mean, if you want to buy something, buy something, but you have no idea, even at my, my level today, when I get an order for a mascara, I do a happy dance. I'm just so excited to service another person. I mean, I know I, I just, it's just such a joy. So when you, when you have a friend that starts in business, be the girl rooting for her rise, like comment, you know, exchange a product you're currently using with maybe a product she's selling. And to me, that's how you, you show love. It is. I love that. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so thankful for your friendship. I, I still can't believe how long it's been, but oh, I'm just so thankful for you. So thank you so much for taking the time to be on here and doing what you do. Awesome. Bye everybody. Bye.